Oh, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy today to be joined by Chad Too Bad. Here on the line, Carl Anderson. How you doing today, Carl? Here, here he is. You know, Chad Too Bad was a man. They, I, I started out wrestling in Cincinnati, and uh, I was Chad Allegra, and I turned heel, and they and they threw the Too Bad on there. And who would have thought that Chad Too Bad would have ended up on? any form of WWE at any time. And then we actually walked out on Raw as Tex Ferguson and Chad Too Bad. It wasn't a great Raw for us, but it was, and, and we were embarrassed completely afterwards. But can you believe that? I can't even believe you guys are saying Chad Too Bad right now, but thanks, man. Well, you know, it's funny. You know, it's funny is that in today's wrestling world, especially WWE, like you're Carl Anderson. They just want, you know, yeah. whatever. But when you really think about it, like what we grew up with, loving pro wrestling, Chad Too Bad is an awesome name. Like, that's a money character. Yeah. Right oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I grew up in North Carolina, right? And I still, and it, it, and it's kind of hard to, to find people that remember this wrestler, but there was a wrestler called Laser Tag. Like, do you remember him? Oh, yes. Laser like, Tag. In, laser Tron. It was yeah. lasers or, or laser something. Laser Tron. Laser Tron. Yes. Okay. And, and like, if you grabbed his the, the thing on his on his chest he like would fall over or that was like what got him and i remember wanting to gra- i was like eight or nine years old at the Asheville civic center man and i wanted to grab that thing to see if he would really fall over and like but those are the characters that stood out to me man and it, it, like it's it's crazy it's hector guerrero no yeah that was him yeah possible if you grabbed that he would have tipped over <laughs> he probably would, or i would have got thrown out of the arena <laughs> well sure yeah well listen we got we got a big show coming up yeah, it's August first. Talking Shop Mania, available on Fight TV, as you noted on Twitter, fourteen ninety five. So we don't want any excuses. That you can't afford this one here, but bunch of names: Enzo Amore, Heath Slater, Willie Mack, Kurt Hawkins. Tell us all about Talking Shop Mania. Talking Shop Mania was, you know, we got released from the WWE surprisingly to our. To, to us, it was surprisingly on April 15th or 16th. I think it was the 15th. And Gallows called me about an hour later. Well, he called me a couple of times in between that hour. And I, I just ignored because I just didn't feel like talking to him at that point. But we finally spoke after about an hour. And he had us booked in, in Spain, somewhere else for signings in October, not realizing we'd still be stuck at home in, in this in this coronavirus era. And he also said, guys, I'm going to run a pay-per-view in my backyard. Um, I've been on the phone with Fight TV and, and other uh, and other pay-per-view outlets, and I'm going to run a pay-per-view in, in my backyard with or without you, but I hope that you guys are involved. And I go, what are you talking about, man? And then next thing you know, we start throwing this stuff together, and then we're like, dude, we got to spoof the Boneyard match because how can we not? Our our final match in the WWE was at WrestleMania with with possibly the Undertaker's final match in the WWE, and my last bump was – a tombstone on top of a roof and gallows was thrown to his death off of the roof. How do you not have fun with the boneyard match? And I, and then he goes, and I got Chavo Guerrero coming. I've got Enzo Amore coming. Like let's, I got Scott Demore who wants to overlook it. And like, let's, let's have fun and let's do this. And here we are. You know, I don't want to make this a whole buried WWE episode, but you know, when you, yeah. when you talk about talking shop mania and, you know, we watch AEW and New Japan and all these different promotions. And the Boneyard match actually is, is an exception in WWE. Because if you look at all their cinematic matches, that one's totally different than Firefly Funhouse, The Swamp Fight, all of those. Wrestling, and you would know this as well as anybody, I mean, it used to be such a collaborative effort amongst the talent. Guys come up with an idea, these guys come up with an idea, you run it by somebody, you use your creativity. I mean, crazy people get into pro wrestling. And if you just let them go, they come up with great ideas. And it just feels like, you know, with the exception of the Boneyard match, you don't get that creativity in WWE. I mean, you maybe will get an idea through here and there, but I mean, it's mostly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you show up for work, they tell you what to do. You know, maybe you want to do something, whatever, but largely it's just... You're doing whatever they tell you, and you miss out on that that creativity that creates things like a talking shop of mania. You know, it it a hundred percent does, and it's and it's not. And it's, I don't think it's burying them at all because it's. I mean, they're a massive, massive promotion and, and conglomerate global 
insanity and they're, they're what they do obviously works for them right and every i remember clearly a couple of times we did promos backstage and they wanted us to to pre-record them and then we would do them in the way that we would do them the way me and gallows and aj would do them when we were in the bullet club and we were having fun and we would do it like that and then they would try to get they would clear that with another writer and then they would watch it and then they'd go nah we need you guys to do it this way and then so next thing you know we're cutting promos the way they wanted they wanted us to and this isn't blaming them because you got to stand up for yourself and go to different hierarchies but but yes flat out we would just started to say listen we'll, we'll just do what we're told and that's kind of what ended up happening then you get stuck in this in this nonstop wheel of, of doing what you're told, then you start to get like, you know, bored and miserable. And that cares? starts to show off on your, and it starts to show off on your on-screen character and, and, and how you're, and how you're performing. And so being able to do talk and shop mania, like we, we did nothing but make ourselves laugh this whole time that we're, that we're doing this. And we got freight train in there, just eliminating people in this social distancing battle Royal. And, I'm laughing so hard at, on commentary watching it that I, I can't even I can't breathe, um, and it, 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 it's those little things that we think is funny that I know that our fans will will think is at least funny. If you if you don't watch Talking Shop of Mania and smile, man, I don't think you're a human being. Carl, let me just be straight up with you. When's the last time yep. you've had fun? I mean, before now. When's the last time that you actually went, man? I, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. The things are okay, you know. When's the last time you've really felt that unchained? You know, well, unchained. It, it's been a while. It's it's been a while, obviously, probably since you know when we debuted in the WWE. But I will say there there were you know spurts and moments when we got to have some really cool matches with the Usos and the New Day, and then when we when we reformed with AJ and uh, with the OC, and like, there there were some fun moments there for sure, like that we had as friends and. And, and, and things to, to entertain. There were some fun things. And I will say the, a lot of the live events were really enjoyable. That's where you got a chance to stop and look at the crowd and tell them to shut up. And then they start booing you. And, th- and that kind of stuff, like as an entertainer, as a professional wrestler, you miss that stuff, man. And that, that, that was some of the stuff that I, that I'm looking forward to doing now. And so it's, you know, it's been a while since I've had a really, really fun time with the boneyard match with Undertaker and, and AJ and, and, and Triple H there and Michael Hayes was there. Like I, I will say that was enjoyable. Like, that was that was a pretty fun it was a it was a good way to go out if it had to be the last one. And you know it's funny because I mean this shouldn't be I and mean, this is obvious, but like if you have fun putting something together, it's usually fun for the viewers at home. And I don't I mean there, I don't think there was practically everybody loved the Boneyard match. You know, some people really like the the Firefly Funhouse and thought it was as good or whatever, but you know, Firefly Funhouse match at Mania, you either loved it or you hated it. And for the Boneyard match, it was pretty much everybody enjoyed it because it was fun. Like, that's what pro wrestling is all about. It's fun. And you mentioned house shows, so I want to ask you about this. You know, the, with COVID, WWE is not running any house shows, obviously. And they had already, in January, started axing house shows. They were down to very few house shows. I think it was January, but... And I think that when they come back, when fans start coming back to buildings, I still think they're going to run very few house shows. I think the days of four house shows a week or three house shows or whatever, I think that's history. As a wrestler, I mean, tell everybody about house shows. Like, I've always been told that a lot of guys, that's their favorite thing to do is to go out there and do house shows because you get some time. As you know, you get to yell at the people. You get some some back and forth with the fans. What were your thoughts on house shows? You know, at, at the end of the day, like, I, it, so I started wrestling when I was, you know, 20 years ago now. And I started in a garage in, in Cincinnati, Ohio, and there was 35 people in there, and that was, like, my debut. And that was – and they were all cheering and booing, and it was so much – I can still I can still feel that now. And so that's – that's what that's what I've always lived for is that reaction. And so with WWE, you know, you got the opportunity, you've got this television on Monday nights, but what that does is that drives it for the Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. That's those house shows in, you know, in in the say the big raw is in Memphis, well you've got a house show in Louisville on Friday and then a house show in in Lexington on Saturday, then a house show on just say Cincinnati on Sunday. 
and that's where you can just have fun, man. You can have so much fun. You can walk to the ring and tell the people to shut up. And it's like, that's what professional wrestling was based on. And that was where I did have a lot of the fun. And of course the TV is where you, is where you build your brand and make your money, but it really was a good time to get out there and knock those out. And they did start taking those house shows away. And I think probably because the draw had gone down, I mean, SmackDown was running four. You know, they had three house shows and then TV, and, and the Raw brand was running three shows and then TV. And, you know, the, the the houses were getting kind of light because you got it so spread thin. And, you know, and how many new stars have they built in the last whatever years? So it makes sense that the house show crowds are going to go down. And uh, I think once it comes back, the crowds will probably still be down for a little while. But, you know, and who knows how long it'll take for people to, to want to get back out. But, I, I really enjoy the house shows, man. And if, and if Impact, where we're at now, ever starts to start running them again, I want to be on all of them. You know, the show this coming weekend, talking Shop of Mania August 1st, it's a list of names here. I mean, some of them, you know, rather contemporary, Heath Slater, Heath Miller's on there, Willie Mack, Rock and Roll Express, Enzo. But then there's some names here like Sick Boy, Lodi, Reese, and Scotty Riggs. Like this is not meant yeah. to be a burial, but where in the world did you find these guys? Well, t- sadly, Scotty Riggs wasn't able to make it, but oh. you know, the the which I, I wanted him to be on there badly, of course, because as it, I mean, I grew up watching the flock, right? And so we always we have a lot of respect for guys that that came before us. It's just something that I was taught and and still do. And when Gallo said that he knew he knew how to get a hold of. Lodi and Sick Boy and, and, and Ron Reese. I mean, if you didn't watch, if you watched Monday Night Nitro, you know who the flock is. You know those guys. And I said, book them, brother, 100%. So Gallo's got a hold of them, and they came to his house, and they were awesome, man. Ron Reese, like, I don't even Ron know Reese. when the last time I saw his name anywhere. It feels like the last time was in the flock. <laughs> it has to it has to have been, and, and he was so nice, and, and, and he's still he's a massive man. I mean, he's six ten or eleven or something like that. And he was he was just so kind. And I, the only thing the only thing I can really remember about him is I think Goldberg gave him the what you call it the his what's it, the finisher jackhammer jackhammer. Yeah, that's the last thing I remember of Reese. Was that right? I mean, that's the only thing. I well, know. I mean, he according to the match with the Raven or something. According to Wikipedia here. Uh, his last match in WCW was 1998. He lost to Saturn, who gave him a Death Valley driver. And then (laughs) I guess he had some matches in in Japan and for Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, but it looks like he's not done anything since 2005. Well, I think he was probably happy for the booking and maybe to get out of the house, right? (laughs) Oh, man, and ironically... So So we had him. His last appearance was for Vince Russo's Glory Ring of Glory Wrestling, where he portrayed a character named Evil. How about that? So this 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 makes perfect sense to be on Talking Shop of Mania, probably the worst pay per view that you'll ever see, except the fact that if you that you're gonna have a good time. You might think it might suck, and if you if you're watching if you're if you're trying to watch this to watch Kenny Omega versus. Versus versus Okada in a in a six star fifty minute match, man, it ain't happening. But I do have I do know that Kenny Omega and Okada would be involved in something like this and really enjoy it. Yes, well, stand by. Yeah, we're I gonna head to a break, really, and I even did a watch it and enjoy it. <laughs> stand by. We're gonna head to a break. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, Carl Anderson joining us here today. If you go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez, everything that you need to know about Talk and Shop of Mania. Saturday, August 1st, 2020, in-demand pay-per-view, Fight TV, all the links and everything you need are right there. But if I miss anything, Carl, including talking about impact here, floor is yours. Well, you know, this is a good chance for people to get some eyes on impact. You know, impact's been doing some good things over the last uh, couple of years. And now that the good brothers are there, it gives them a chance to see us uh, explore a whole different venture. And, and we're excited to do to be there with Impact and, and, and wrestle some new guys, man. And But most importantly right now is August the 1st, Saturday. This is Talking Shop of Mania, the brainchild of Talking Shop Podcast, which you can find on all podcast platforms. But Fight TV, In Demand, we're available on pay-per-view worldwide. Most importantly, the main event is Chad Too Bad versus Sex Ferguson and none other than a boner yard match. Oh, I my mean, the God. Rock and roll Express, <laughs> the Rock and Roll Express show up. There's fire, there's fireworks, 
There's a hearse that Gallows bought for three thousand dollars. Dude, that's all you had to say was there's fire house. and you've sold pay per views. Yes. There's fire, everybody. Yep, it, and the rock and roll. And there's a hearse. And there's a hearse. <laughs> Chad Too Bad has an entrance in a hearse, man. Just sit back, have a couple cold beers, and forget about reality, please, and then watch this. <laughs> There you go. This coming Saturday, everybody, August twenty, uh, August first, twenty twenty. Fire a hearse. Sex Ferguson in the main event boner yard match. What more could you ask for? Coming up on Saturday. And Brian Myers and Heath Miller drinking beer, watching it in the middle of. It. <laughs> yes, and tomorrow Rocky Romero is going to be on the show, and Sex Ferguson himself is going to be on Friday. Carl, I want to thank you so much for doing the show today. We're totally out of time, and of course, every day we're here. Everyone, so check it out. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.